I don't think any anime has made me cry as much as Violet Evergarden. Now, that's not really a feat, I'll cry over anything, but I'm serious when I say I binged this show and did not stop crying for the duration of the 13 episodes. My emotional propensities aside, there is one major thing I see a lot of when I read about people who either gave up on or never tried watching Violet Evergarden, and that's... Violet Evergarden. Violet Evergarden is the main character of the anime, rightfully so if it's been named after her. A lot of people complain about how she initially comes off as the most unrelatable, tropey, OP Mary Sue husk who's good at everything she does with military precision except emotion. And it kills me, because I just know these people didn't watch past the first or second episode. Violet is absolutely set up in the beginning as all of those things, but as the story progresses it becomes clear that the writers intentionally exaggerated all of these characteristics in order to actually help the reader empathize with her character. That sounds like some super loaded shit, but bear with me. Violet Evergarden does an amazing job meticulously constructing the story so that none of what it appears to be at face value is actually what it is, but rather a series of elements that all relate back to the actual theme of the story. Violet's obvious disconnect from the world actually humanizes her rather than alienates her, even though it's literally alienating her within the story. A lot of people like to accuse her of being an unrelatable character because of her overwhelming fixation on the military and her duty as a soldier that seems to suck the humanity out of her. The issue with this argument is that it's fundamentally backwards. I can't speak from personal experience, but I know a good deal about human psychology and I can't begin to imagine the emotional toll that war will take on a person, especially a, a child. child. The only way a person can go to war and not completely fall apart is if he learns to compartmentalize emotionally on the battlefield. It's important not to humanize the enemy. To be able to go out and actively work to kill another human being, to be able to endure unimaginable horrors and high stress situations back to back without any certainty that the outcome will favor you requires an immense amount of emotional fortitude and airtight discipline over one's perception of life. This means that when you're on duty, you check your emotional shit at the door. It's not uncommon for soldiers returning from war to experience a sort of adjustment period where they relearn whatever standard social know-how they might have had wrung out of them over the course of their military career. Violet serves as an extreme example of this military-civilian disconnect. Her experience is intentionally exaggerated in order to help the viewer immediately recognize the fact that she's struggling to adjust without the sense of purpose provided to her by military life. So while Violet's characterization is indeed a little extreme, it's not at all without purpose and actually helps the viewer empathize with her more wholly than if she was some totally average girl with a dash of PTSS thrown in for flavor. The premise of the anime has Violet working as an auto-memory doll someone able to be commissioned to write letters that express a person's true feelings even when that person isn't fully able to realize those feelings himself. She's perfect at the job in every way, except, obviously, the important way, which is emotionally. She has no idea that people say things that have a different meaning than what can be taken at face value, because in the military that she grew up in, it was only ever necessary for her to understand her direct orders and execute them. She approaches this job as she approached life as a soldier, by trying to do what others asked of her so literally that it ends up exposing just how much social development she truly lacks. Once it becomes apparent to her and everyone else that she really has no idea what she's doing when it comes to even the most basic human interactions, we really start to see the direction the story is intending to take. It's not just some awkward but extremely combatively competent child, child who's got no business being in the military, showing up in civilization and going on quirky adventures to find that aforementioned emotional baggage she checked all those years ago. She recognizes her failures, and she wants to overcome them and learn what it means to empathize with other people on a human level, and so she becomes extremely relatable to the viewer, who also understands the desire to connect with others emotionally and perhaps struggles with it himself. Obviously, her motive for becoming an auto-memory doll doesn't directly correlate to the theme of post-military adjustment, but that's because it's just that, a motive. If we were just following around this emotionally checked out girl for 13 episodes watching her come to revelations about humanity, it would be fine, but we wouldn't have nearly as compelling of a motive for her to be doing so, nor would we have the phenomenally built up emotional arc of her learning what it means to love someone. Episodic stories like this one that also include an overarching plot to reach at the end are difficult to properly execute because timing is such a critical factor in the writing process. A popular and all around generally accepted epitome of this approach is Avatar The Last Airbender, which had three seasons, each with around 20 episodes that all managed to converge on the same final conclusion at the very end of the story. Not every single episode was the same monotonous march towards the end goal. The characters were still human and still had fun, and while episodes were often hosted in different settings with different supporting characters and different motives for that problem of the day, it never lost its main focus, which was that Aang was mastering the four elements to defeat the Fire Lord. Violet Evergarden has the same basic setup on a much smaller scale limited to 13 episodes. 
Violet, intent on determining what Major Gilbert meant when he told her I love her, you. travels and writes letters on behalf of other people in hopes of learning through these experiences what those words mean, and by extension, what it means to be human. Each episode takes her to a different location with a different supporting cast and a different problem for her to tackle, all of which slowly but surely build her understanding of what love and empathy are, until eventually, the main arc reaches its tipping point and she discovers that Gilbert is actually dead, and everything she's me? learned up to this point about humanity and emotion and the value of life is finally put to use. Use, but not at all in the way that she intended. The irony here, that we knew from the start that Gilbert was dead and we watched her commit herself to him still believing he was alive, makes this moment even more heartbreaking, despite the fact that we all knew it was coming. This story expands beyond the allegorical approach to the aftermath of war by making it personal. We know her efforts are doomed from the start, but we follow her so far into her journey that we become invested in her victories. We love to watch her grow. We ache knowing that this growth is going to cause her pain in the end. But at the same time, we acknowledge that this growth is going to help her deal with her grief in a far healthier way than if she had never pursued it in the first place, and so we root for her, desperately wanting to see her pull through because at least with this growth she'll be able to recover. That's how you humanize a protagonist. You don't need to make her quirky or uncomfortable or clumsy. You need to make her deal with genuine emotion the way a real person deals with those genuine emotions and portray that in such a way that the viewer comes to empathize with this character, regardless of how unrelatable she seems in the beginning. I don't really have a justifiable rationale for why she has mechanical arms, but there is a minor detail in that that I find interesting. Everyone knows the trope of the girl with a missing or covered eye. See Misaki Mei and another, Minne Uryu from Future Diary, Nui Harume and Kill a Kill, etc. And I think that at first glance, people assume Violet's prosthetics function the same way. But, and this is just me looking too deep into things, I don't know if they actually meant this or not, I think it's an interesting comparison to observe how Violet deals with the loss of her arms as opposed to the loss of Major Gilbert. She doesn't care at all about her arms literally being blown off of her body, Hi, but in contrast, the realization that Gilbert is dead nearly kills her. The Major isn't just an extension of herself, he's her entire reason for living. I don't think even Violet realizes that in the very beginning, even though she's adamant that if the Major- He doesn't need me anymore, then I should be discarded. She believes her purpose is war, and that that's the only thing she's living for. But as she develops over the course of the show, she realizes she's actually living for him, and eventually, living in honor of him. In the conclusion of the show, Violet is forced to return to her violent roots when she defends Gilbert's brother from an anti-peace faction that intends to kill everyone on the train they're on. While trying to disable a bomb, she sacrifices her arms in desperation. There's a powerful contrast in the meaning behind this scene and the one in which she initially loses her real arms. The first time, she loses them because she's defending Gilbert, but allows other soldiers to die just to protect him, even though she fails to save him in the end. On the train, she destroys her own prosthetic arms to save people she doesn't have nearly the same level of personal investment in. I mean, sure, Gilbert's brother is there, but he's a douchebag that blames her for Gilbert's death and tells her she has no reason to live without a war to fight, and she saves him anyway. Her friends from the auto memory doll service are there, but they aren't her whole world like the Major was. It's a gratifying, full-circle image of her character's development, so even if the prosthetics seem kind of extra, they serve to show how the fixational care she designated only for Gilbert has grown and developed into a genuine, empathic care for human life. Violet Evergarden is an emotional journey from start to finish. If you haven't seen it yet, sorry for spoiling like half the plot, but you should definitely check it out. Aside from its great storytelling, it has phenomenal animation and a beautiful score, and is just generally enchanting all around. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to smash that subscribe.